Okay, so this is Wildcard, yeah, and uh, this is actually going to be my first live stream, meaning what I'm saying is streaming live, and I, if I make any mistakes, I just sound like a dumbass, so you're going to play this tournament with me and hear how I would play my hands, and my think, there it is already, my thought process um, in every hand, so eight deuce with a raise. Not much to think about. Um, these tournaments, it's a set and go. Let's pull it up for you. It's um, $60 buy-in, $230 for first, $99 for second. And you start with 1,500 chips, so there's not much play. The strategy is, you know, pick up a hand and run hard with it. Um, try to get value out of it if you hit it real hard, but... Queen nine. Uh, we're going to call for uh, pot odds here. As you can see, it's five minute blind, so it's pretty quick. Um, you don't have a ton of wiggle room, so with three people calling for 20 chips early in the tournament, I figured it was a good position to try to hit something, and if I did, um, maybe get some chips earlier value out of it but obviously with the flop even if you have two overs you're not going to call any bet here we all know that um still the same scenario so don't make a bet at it usually it's got to be the king here A6 on the button, it's six-handed tournament, so, um, I mean, an ace is a raise in hand and six-handed, any ace, after, under the gun position, so you're expecting a raise with just about anything right there, and to see how strong he is, and also drive out maybe the later position hands here that don't have great position after the flop. So we're going to do this with an ace here, which you don't always want to do this, but I really feel like that had to be a move he's making there. A min raise in decent position for a six-handed tournament. So I got a nut flush draw, so I'm going to play it like I got a, a piece of this, which I do, um, I, but obviously it's a draw. I'm going to play it like I got it, you know, like I, I got a king here or something. So 242 in the pot. We'll be a little strategic with it. A little more than half the pot. And a raise here is not welcome, but definitely what it called. An all-in, probably the same scenario. Suited ace, and it's kind of large. Pretty good. I don't do min raises very often unless I'm pretty late in the tournament, in multi-table tournaments. And uh, sit and goes, you'll never see me a min raise. So um, one over card to beat my ace or my ten. So this is a continuation bet situation. About half the pot would be 76, so we're going to go a little heavier. We'll make it 80. And, you know, that's that's when the continuation bet works for you. A lot of people will call you at second or even bottom pair if they think you're continuation betting. These tournaments, not so much. I'm more of a multi-table uh, multi -table tournament player, so I don't play a lot of these. Um, just trying to get my feet wet a little bit with the talking while the game's going on. My commentation skills. But uh, under the gun here. I mean, obviously, my range under the gun is tighter than any other position. So, Jack 2 will not cut it. Big blind, Queen 7. I won't do anything with a little bit of a chick advantage here. I wouldn't do anything but check and look at a flop here. A min raise, I'd even fold. It's good getting used to playing these lower chips and these lower blind levels like this that this tournament provides because in multi-table tournaments, I usually don't like playing to like third, fourth uh, blind level. It's when there's the best action and the best value in the pot. Um, earlier blind levels, you're mo more likely to, uh, you know... Sorry, I had to take a pause there. Don't even remember what I was talking about. But I think I was ta talking about position. Uh, 
early position, you know, obviously you're calling a different type of hand than you would in late position. And in multi-table tournament, the strategies are totally different than they are on here. So... That's obviously a shitty fold for me. 8-4 would have gave me a full house, but whatever. You fold 8-4 no matter what. Even if you get it in the next hand, it's still a folding hand. We know this, even on the button. Um, I just don't have... I mean, in these tournaments, you don't have to be aggressive early in the blinds. Oh, actually, that's what I was talking about before. We'll bring it up because it is useful. Um, early levels in the multi-table tournament is like... You have a risk to lose all your chips to a reward to double up on more of like a coin flip situation or a tough decision that you have to make. So I don't really like playing early blinds. The risk to reward isn't real good. But there has been a lot of tournaments, especially multi-table tournaments, where it was early. I'm sorry. It was early in position, early in the tournament, and I've decided to come in and play it, you know, the first blind level right from the beginning. And, you know, I've caught a monster and had someone come into me aggressively, willing to rebuy into the tournament if it allows it. So, you know, some people like the early blind, some don't. I really don't like playing for petty amounts of chips. So this is a good way to practice for that. Uh, this tournament is designed to start out, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, lower blind levels. Um, instead of 25.50, it starts out at 10.20, goes to 15.30. It goes up slow and gradually. So I got second pair here. Um, I mean, I don't think he would bet top pair like that. Let's see where he's at. We'll do a little more than a min raise. We'll see where he's at here. Calls on a draw most likely with an eight or flush cards. I got two pair now, so I feel like I'm up against a draw, either a straight or a flush draw. Now there's two flushes out there, even though I don't put them on the clubs. We're going to do, do close to a pot bet here. I'd like to get him off this hand and take the pot, but if he calls, obviously it's not too bad of a thing. There's his heart, if that's what he was looking for. He checks. Now I could check this back with him. Um, actually, I'm going to think while you're here with me. Um, I mean, just because I'm, I'll be at a starting stack if, if, if I'm right and he has the flush. Um, the risk isn't real. I mean, if I bet and he goes all in, it'll, I'll hate that. So we'll take the check. Let's see what he has. And you know, I, I had him. You know, that was, that was a bad read. You know, if he had the, the flush, he probably bets it in a tournament like this, especially in the lower blinds. But um, I raised on the on the flop so you know he knows i'm going to be the better and the aggressor here he knows he could check and i'm going to give him a bet there which i didn't um if i did he probably was going to call that i think so i probably missed out on not making that bet there especially if it's a good value bet that i made so on to the next hand it is what it is that was my thinking on that when i still won the chips but you want to get value out of every every pot so um, put him on a flush draw or some type of draw there. I was absolutely wrong. It ended up being, you know, a pair. He had me dominated actually on the flop. So um, the raise there, let's just be happy he didn't give me the re-raise that could have came with with the top pair there. And uh, he that that misplay allowed me to win that hand. You know, top pair, he re-raises me with the ace kicker there. I got a fold. I don't hit my second pair. So, um, on the button with suited cards with one caller, um, I'd like to call this. I'd like to actually be a little aggressive with this. Just, I mean, you got to play your button a little bit. I've got the chips here. Um, 500 chip advantage in this tournament. It's a lot. Re-raise obviously makes it very easy decision for me. Um, to fold because either he knows I'm button raising or he legitimately has a better hand than me. Um, either way, a 2 nine's not going to cut it, either of those scenarios. And I get to see it with his all-in, so that's kind of good for me. Get to kind of sweat him a little bit. King-Queen versus Aces, so 2-9 was way behind, obviously. Uh, King or Queen is needed. He's celebrating maybe too early. Maybe not. All right, so he got it. So there it is, one person out. Uh, we now have a new chip leader, 3,000. I'm the second chip leader, close to 2K. And then you got everyone at just about their starting stack. So I wouldn't say my stack's dominant over the other three that are close to me. Um, I'd say Great King, WA, he's definitely in a dominant position. A 2-to-1 advantage is good, especially early in the tournament. But 
you know, anything could happen, especially in these tournaments. If he just plays a stack right, if you double up early, you should be able to, unless you take a bad beat, be able to get to the final three at least because you could blind out and let everyone else play and make it to the final three with 3K uh, chips early. So um, ace 10 suited. I always keep my raises the same. So I'm going to click the 2X button, which means it's just going to take uh, the big blind and multiply it times three. And it does that every time, and I never fluctuate my pre-flop bet um, in multi-table or single table. This way, they can't get a read on your hand by how much you're betting pre-flop. So, for instance, I bet 150 there. Let's say I got an ace-king, and e either way, even if I played it more aggressively than the ace-ten or less aggressively than the ace-ten, if I bet more with the ace-king it's kind of going to be giving away that I've got a good hand and not the same token. If I've been betting every other hand that way and I have ace king and I bet lower than my normal bet, that can come up as a little bit suspicious as well. So either way, you want to keep your bet the same all the time pre-flop. That's my strategy, something I do. I don't know if everyone does that, but it's worked for me because, you know, if any edge you could get pre-flop to where the – your opponent has you wrong on what you could have pre-flop is good. And the best way to do that is just remain consistent with every race. Um, I'm on the button. You know, I got suited cards. But I got to look at who's in the big blind, which is uh, the chip leader. So he's more likely to call here. So I'm going to do a smooth call, which I never do really. But the smooth calls for if he wants to raise me, he's only going to raise into a little pot. So it can't be a huge raise, which he'll probably do anyways because he knows on the button with a decent hand, even a dry ace, I'm going to raise. So that that's actually a good flop for a limp. Um, even though he's in the big blind, which kind of sucks, he could have any one of them cards. We'll do a little half pot bet. Um, if he calls, he's on a draw or, I mean, either way, I'm not going to make this call. Let me just think through this. I mean, he's in the big blind. It's, he could have two pair right now. He could have one pair. He could have a draw. Um, any of that beats me. I have queen high. A lot of people are like, oh, well, I bet you he has a, a five, six right here. Well, in order to call him, you know, you're calling him with queen high. If you're wrong, he could have something as simple as king or ace high and beat your queen high. So you can't call a bluff without something or a redraw. You know, I mean, I see a lot of people, especially live, doing it. Oh, I, I knew you didn't have it, but, you know, you didn't have nothing to call him with. You didn't have a draw even. You know, you're calling someone with ace high, you know, it's it. you got to have something to draw with it, even if it's a gut shot draw. You can't call a bluff without any other way to win other than the ace high. Then it's just kind of being reckless, and you got to find yourself in a position to make that call a lot. Um, ace queen versus kings, it always sucks when you have the kings, and that ace just flops right out on you, but that's poker, and it's always good to get these players out as early as possible without me being involved in the pot. All right, back to the action. I'm in a big blind. Um, connectors would rather him be suited, obviously, but we just got to watch out for this chip leader here. He's trying to get into these pots, apparently. I've, he's playing a lot of them, which he should be. I mean, not really should be, but, you know, he he's at the position to be the aggressor and chase people off hands that are, are maybe the winner. So we'll just look at a flop here. Hit second, or I'm sorry, bottom pair. Um, we don't have a draw yet, but I mean, the turn could give us one, but we're not even looking at that yet. Um, bottom pair, the chip leader's gonna bet unless he has nothing. So I've got to put him on absolutely nothing. And I've got to make the bet here, even with bottom pair. Um, if I get called, I'm going to pump the brakes. If I get raised, I'll fold, but you know, I got to try to win the pot here with just the bottom pair. And you know, I could even be right here and I could have the best hand, uh, so I got called. It's either a draw or I'm beat. Either way, it's check, check for me. And it was the draw. All right, so he had the open ender. Missed on the river. Either way, I would say be safe there. Even if you think, oh, he don't have a pair. He, he was on a draw. I'd say be safe. Again, don't call a blood. Even that's if, don't call something without something. So if you're going to call here 
on a river if he were to go all in or even make a bet there you're going to call with bottom pair even if you were right and he had the exact hand you put him on which was the jack eight you know you just you got bottom pair you know what i mean that's I've, I've just seen too much of it lately can't always count on yourself to make a great call like that and know he had jack eight so i raised there on the small blind with king queen my standard raise and big blind folded sorry i was covering up i like to look at the hands a little bit after and a lot of these people you'd be surprised i'll be in here playing this 60 dollar um six manner and i'll see these players again you know especially on carbon um multi-table tournaments maybe another sit and go and there could be one hand that i remember these people from you know months later that uh benefits me in, t in a multi-table tournament so you know you always want to be aware of who you're playing look at the names um if you use shark scope it's not really the best to use because it uh, for instance my my tournament history all my greatest wins are not even on there i don't know if i need to email them or what but um let's take a look here the two needs to hit after he hits his jack and he's the short stack and it doesn't so the big stack's chipping down and the short stack is chipping up not good for the rest of the players at the table but we'll take it i guess i do have to get better at um stopping talking and remembering what i was talking about before so I, my apologies obviously i'm going to stop talking again here in a minute about that pocket queens um he's been the chip leader he's been aggressive um you know that's a big raise pre-flop i say get the ace rag out get the king jack out maybe scare you know and if he calls you got pocket queens you just push with this you know maybe you got a call here by him and you do and i was right he did have the eights um, no spades, so we're just just avoid the eight one time or a spade, and there it is. That's my luck on this website lately, but it's better than a loss. So obviously a flush on the board. I don't ever try to argue back and forth with these people. Um, even he just called himself an idiot for making that call. <laughs> so it's all good, you know. I've learned, especially on the internet, it's going to happen because you're playing more hands on the internet. The cards come faster. You don't have to deal with the dealer talking in the hand or taking slow. But what's he saying here? That's what happens when you need to take a dump. Overrides your brain. Yeah, who knows? Um, either way, I think he's a little bit frustrated. So he'll probably give you that call for the rest of the tournament with a lower pair um, or suited cards. I don't know. I've never played with him. I won't knock him too much, but anyways, um, I could, I remember later on. So that's the answer to the earlier problem was if I forget, I apologize. But on top of the apology, sometimes I will remember what I was talking about before. So which was the case there and I forgot again. So. I'm going to have to get better with this commentating stuff, but <laughs> it's interesting. It's fun, and I'd like to track my hands and maybe have other people watch and see my thought process behind the hands, and maybe they could share. Poker's a lot of sharing stories and sharing how people play and how you would have played the hand versus how someone else would have played the hand. Um, I am all ears, uh, but it's more so all ears towards players that i know know who they're know what they're talking about so you know i'll be all ears to somebody telling me his poker beat or or how he would have played a hand but it's not really open ears you know yeah yeah, yeah whatever whatever but the good players you want to get that knowledge that information that's not polluting your brain you want to hear how they played their hand one thing i did that's really got me ahead was um you know when i play live i see a lot of players um in the multi-table tournaments, it's always the same players going to the final table, maybe half of the time almost, which is awesome. I wanted to get there, want to be there. Even if you don't win every time, making the final table is awesome. Gives you the position to win. But, you know... I'm sorry. One of the unfortunate things of internet poker while you own a business and you're at the business is you get caught up a little bit. So once again, I won't remember what I was talking about before that, unfortunately. But um, what 
I think what I was touching on was players a little bit. Um, you know, there's there's all different types of players. So just make sure that you can pro- you try to profile each player. If I don't remember what I was talking about, I will tell you the main thing. Profile each player, especially if you play it on more than once. Like a uh, great King WA here. I'm going to put a, my first read on him right now is, you know, he chipped up a little bit. He's saying things, he's acting ways, and he's making calls that lets me know he maybe not desperate, but but he's going to give you a, a call that you want. So King-9 suited on the button. Um, I would say that's a raising hand. Um, the blinds are big, so my 2x or 3x on the big blind raises are a little bit too much. So now it's kind of min-raise territory. Otherwise, I'm going to be committing myself to have to call every all-in. If I were to put in 360 right now, um, it'd be hard to lay hands down that are decent. Not the King-9, but you guys know what I mean. So I'm going to make it look a little suspicious. <laughs> all right, so he was ready to go all-in. It's probably a pair. Especially with a low stack, or I have live cards. Hopefully, Ace King crushes me. Um, it's just hard to put him on any hand. What hand it could be? I'm sorry, but I'm gonna make this call. Um, it's it's just hard to say. Is it Ace King or is it a pair? If I have to guess, I'd say that's a low pair, or it could be, very well be either a dry Ace, Queen Jack, or King Jack, something like that. Let's see. All right, so I'm live. That's what I was hoping for, and he gets his Ace right away. We need some help here. Uh, Ten on the river. No. Okay. So, I mean, that's a situation where I could have folded, definitely. Um, with a min raise, I had 250, and it was an extra 650 about to call. And uh, I was hoping to be live, and if I was live, I'd feel like I made the right call. But I, I was live, and I just didn't win it. That's poker. So we're going to keep the min raise here, which I did 250 last time, but whatever, same thing. Um Whatever. It always sucks when you have, like, kings and you get a walk after a min race, but don't ever be upset. Take the pots that you win and uh, be happy that you didn't lose them because there's a lot of ways in poker you can lose to bad runouts. So I wouldn't really worry about getting a walk on a good hand. So we're just going to stay away from hands like that right now with the, my chips and everyone else's. It's anyone's game right now. Um, you're going to want to make sure you have uh, a decent hand that you at least feel confident in due to the playing situation or pre-flop hand. You know, if it's real good pre-flop or if you got like jack down suited, you're on the button, you feel good about it. Um, so people are going to play a little tighter right now too because they know people can easily be knocked out. Um, a razor's very likely to have to commit their chips after the flop, whether they hit or not. So people got that people have that in mind. So you're gonna see a lot of little betting and people fold and you know until a couple people go out here or somebody gets short like uh Beatwiner was. Beatwiner was down to about six hundred chips, made his way back up a couple times. So that's what they do. Though that's when you gotta worry about the all ins more than now. The Someone with an all-in now is going to have a hand that they don't want to see a flop with. It's usually a pair, mid-pair, low pair. Ten four suited. Like I said, we're not in no position to really be playing any crazy type of way right now. Um, to my right in a big blind, there's somebody with enough chips to call a raise here. So raise is no good. Um, a call wouldn't be no good because if you see here, I have these two people with about the same amount of chips as me. So why even put 60 in and then I'm lower in my stack versus them? So we fold that hand and we play another one. On the button, need a hand right now. There's no moves or anything in a six-man tournament when the blinds are coming up like this. There's no real moves. You have a hand and you go with it or you don't make a min raise and put yourself in a situation where you could get away with it if you want. Some people will play that way. I, I, I like to look at a flop. I'll get away from a hand even if I'm 50, 60% committed, especially in these kind of tournaments where it pays top two out of six people. So sometimes you just drag your way into the money if you need to. So I've been min raising. you got to keep up with that. I'm just adding 10 chips. It just makes it look a little different. It's not really anything mysterious or any strategy behind it. 
you'll see it a lot live too. Like it'll be 100, 200 blinds. Uh, min raise is four, 400, and they'll make it like 425 or 450. I've seen that a lot in the World Series of Poker events. Um, where they're just barely doing more in the min raise, and then it's looked at the same as if it was raised any higher. Um, actually, if you raise any higher, they're, uh, their eyebrows up at you wondering why you're making that kind of raise, which is why I kind of had to adjust my way of playing when I got there because my raises were too big, and I was getting more calls because I was making bigger raises than the guys making smaller raises were. So I kind of had to play a strategy I never played in the World Series, threw me off. I didn't cash none of the events that I played or didn't even make it really to day two on none of the events. Uh, King heads up. I'm going to go for it because I haven't been raising him. Hopefully he notices that, like, oh, this guy hasn't been pushing me. And uh, now now he raised me. Give me a little credit, which he did. I don't know if that was a thought process, but an ace has to be raised right now. Um, see, my min raise allows me to fold to an all-in if I want. Doesn't mean I always will. I mean, I hope Great King WA doesn't because he's just, I don't give him much credit, even though he's been folding a lot. So now that he's back to normal chips, I think he's kind of come back to earth. I don't think he's desperate or being crazy anymore. I'd kind of just put him on a normal profile now as to where I had it a little differently before. All right, so we got a king deuce under the gun to fold. So right now it's all about, you know, any chips is good, right? Anything, you know, uh, min raised and taking the blinds is huge right now. Um, 225 chips is a good amount right now. So you'll start seeing more of this, like aces going versus drawn hands, which queen eight off. I don't know about all that, but. All right, the ace takes him out. That's one more bite to the dust. I'll take these pocket kings and this single big to a raise. He min raises. I'm going to min raise back to him and hope he goes all in, which he will do with a pair or a eight strong ace. Um, Yeah, he's got a pair, mid pair. Uh, I wouldn't even say a strong ace. Yeah, all right. Good read. Glad he didn't have the strong ace. One time... Can they let me not get river? Thank you. All righty. So that's good. Now we're down to three people. One more person goes out. I'm in the money. Um, that brings the strategy huge. I'm two to one on these guys, so I could push them around a little bit. They want to make the money, um, and we're going to start right off rip with the pushing around. Um, you know, if he goes all in and he got the balls to do it for his bubble, so be it to him. But And we're going to come right out because I have a heart, and he doesn't, maybe. So we're even going to get a little more aggressive. I know the type of poker they need to play right now, and it's fold until the other guy goes out. That's what they're both thinking. So I'm going to be super aggressive here and uh, f and raise pre-flop most of the hands with with me knowing that if they go all in over the top, I will fold because they're waiting for that. They're waiting for me, you know. So we're going to keep raising even though it's bullish, yes, but this is how you have to play these tournaments when you're two to one. Because you see, he's folding better hands than mine, no doubt. Will they notice that I'm doing this? Yes. But they also notice that they both have about the same amount of chips. And they don't want to go out before the next guy. So sooner or later, they're, they're going to have to take a stand. And it'll be with an ace or a little pair. And I'm not going to not gonna run with that. You know, Suited cards, some people would be aggressive and even try to take them out here. Nah, no need. Especially when I didn't raise that hand. I'm almost three to one on him, so I, I told you you're gonna. It's always gonna be an ace something right here, or it's a pair. So you always think that uh, when I'm gonna make the call, I will make one of these calls here sooner or later with a mar marginal hand or something to where you guys will be like, oh, I don't know if I would have done that, just because I can lose the 1700 and the risk to reward. The risk is losing 1700. The reward is getting 99 dollars in the money. So. They're just, uh, 
I think they know the situation right now, so you're going to see a lot of shoving. There's going to be no calling, no men raising. A men raise means they have an absolute monster. Somebody not going all in with their stack has a monster. Jack five suited, two marginal. Little slow roll there. Two three, you know, they've been they've been going with their hands, multiple hands in a row here. I can't think that I could just keep doing it. I'm off suit if I get called. I'm mad. We're gonna lay that one down, live the fight another day. Because it keeps them around the same too. You wanna keep your eye on these guys. As long as they're around the same, they're gonna keep playing the strategy. I'm gonna let them fight in this one, even though I'm on the button. It's a bad hand, and mine's well. If they're small and big blind, they're more susceptible to fighting each other with bad hands than to fight me versus my bad hand, if that makes any sense to you. They'd rather go against each other than go against me, definitely. Um, so it's not a two to one chip lead, so Beatwiner, who has accolades, he. He, he knows the situation. He knows he don't need to make moves here. So remember when I told you anything other than an all-in is a monster? I, I really, this got to be a monster. It's ace-king, even suited, ace-queen, or it's a pair higher than mine. Um, I have the chips to try to take him out with all, but once again, if this is just a raise here and not an all-in, I'm crushed. So he, he if he went all-in there, I might have called. But because it was just a raise, we'll let him fight again with my eight deuce off. And there they go. No, they don't. So he's making his way back up. You know, he could be getting his run of cards. But I just need to sit back. I'll find my hand to try to take him out with. I'm going to raise this one because I haven't acted in a while. And it's just about picking your spot. They see me folding, too, as much as they see me raising. They know I'm letting them fight. When it's time for them to fight, that's what I'm letting it be in my button. Unless I get any suited cards I'm going to raise with, any ace I'm going to raise with. That that I would have called an all-in with, the ace-10. The ace-deuce, I'm going to make him hate his life. Because even if he has an ace, he has to fold. Unless it's a high one. Once again... It's not. If this was a connected hand, I would push the action. But because it's not, I get more value in letting these two try to knock each other out and put me right into the pay scale. So we're going to let them fight still. It's an important strategy when you're a uh, three-way action in a six-man tournament. Here we go. Uh, the five is in big trouble. He needs the spike and has less chips. And he doesn't. So the jack will win there. He's going to go all in here, unless it's real bad. He should call, and I'll call, and there's no situation where I'm betting here. We should check it down the whole way. And I took him out. So now it's a heads-up match. Any ace is a raise, which I'm going to do here. And it's important to understand the heads-up game. It's not an all-in battle. People think, oh, I'm heads-up, oh, all-in or fold. You still have – I have uh, – what is it, 30 big blinds, and he has 20, he, he's got 12 big blinds, so there's plenty of action to be played here. Um, you want to watch a re-raise, so like this hand, I don't want to raise and get re-raised, so I'll smooth call it, because I want to see the flop with it, and that's what happened, I hit my diamonds, a draw is a bet, heads up to me. I play, actually play a lot of heads up, um, I'm going to gamble this, just because the diamonds will be superior and he'll be done if um i want to put a guess on it just to make myself look good i'm gonna say um he came right out no he checked raised he has a 10 here yes all right that was right and there's the diamond got him good read good takeout he's done thanks guys for watching um i'm glad my first live broadcast well not really live but taped broadcast with the microphone live i hope it was a success feel like it was because first place it is wild card yeah